Hi everyone! Today we will practice classes by drawing a forest of objects with OpenCV. So we will first create a tree class and then we will replicate it with different sizes, different locations and different colors, all random. We will begin with some starter code which you guys can copy from the description. And basically what we've done here is we first created a blank image, then we have added some background to that image and we have displayed it up until a key press event has been detected. And once it was detected, we collapsed the display window along with the image. Now, if you guys are not quite familiar with these commands, definitely check out my previous OpenCV tutorial where I went over everything in detail. Otherwise, we can quickly run this cell with shift enter and here's our beautiful background image. Now, if we press on any key on our keyboard, let's say J, it's gone. Now, let's create a new class and we will call it tree. Now, the first method our tree takes in would be init, which is the most important method of them all. Now, init takes in the self parameter as well as an image and a location where to draw the tree. Now, traditionally, init is where we create attributes then we can access these attributes from the rest of the methods, which is really, really handy. Now, our first attribute would be self.image, which will store our image. Similarly, self.lock or location will store our location. Now, another attribute that any tree should have is height. So we will type self.ht, which is height, and we will assign it to let's say 300 pixels, at least at first. And by the way, if you're not sure what an attribute is or what is the init method, definitely check out my classes and objects tutorial and only then come back here. And once we have defined these basic attributes, we can finally move on with drawing the tree. And we will do this from a special draw method, which will take in the self parameter. Now, the first thing I would like to draw is a tree trunk. So what we will do is we will draw a cv.line, we will draw it on our self.image, which represents our image, of course, and then we will move on with the location. Now, since we already have a location attribute for the x-axis, we will simply copy self.lock and we will replace both x1 and x2 with it. And this will result in a vertical line in whichever location we choose. Now, in terms of the horizontal coordinates, we will select Y1 to be the ground level, where we have stored ground level as a global variable. And in terms of Y2, we have already defined a height for our tree. So we will simply replace Y2 with self.height. Now, in terms of colors, I have already predefined them to save some time. So instead of selecting a color, we will simply type brown. And then we will select a line thickness of 20 pixels. Now, since we have made some changes to the original image, in order to see them, we need to return the image itself. And then once we do that, we can go ahead and call the tree class. We will simply assign it to a variable called image which equals tree, and it takes in two arguments. The first argument is the image. In our case, that would be BG, our background image. And we will also select a location where we would like to draw this tree. In my case, I'm going to go with 450 pixels horizontally. And then once we have passed these two arguments to the init method, we can go ahead and call the draw method. And then lastly, we will replace BG with image. So we display the new image rather than the old background. Now let's go ahead and run this cell with shift enter. And here's our beautiful tree trunk. Now let's draw some leaves. And this time we will draw a circle of leaves with cv.circle, which takes in our image as well as a set of coordinates for the center of the circle. Now, in my case, I would like to draw it exactly where the trunk ends. So I will simply copy the X2 and Y2 coordinates and I will paste them right over here. We will then specify a radius of 100 pixels for our circle as well as a color of green. 
Then lastly, we will set it to a line thickness of minus one, which will fill the shape rather than outlining it. Now let's consider an important detail. Since we want to draw this tree in a variety of shapes and sizes, hard coding a radius of 100 is not a very good idea. Instead, let's create an attribute called self.radius, which will equal to 100. Then we will copy the name of the attribute and we will replace the hard coded 100 with it. This will allow us way more flexibility in the future steps. And now if we run this cell with shift enter, our tree now looks much more like a tree. But now I notice that it doesn't really reflect the height we have selected. So let's quickly close it and we will fix it. Aha, so I see the problem. Instead of specifying self.height, we need to make it relative to the ground level. So let's copy ground level, let's paste it in front of self.height, and we will add a minus in between. And we will also adjust the height inside our circle. So instead of self.height, it's ground level minus self.height. And if we rerun the code once again with shift enter, and now our tree is finally 300 pixels tall. So the keynote of this entire tutorial is relative coordinates. Now let's go ahead and make this tree much, much prettier. To do this, we will first copy the circle command and we will create two additional leaf circles along the side of the main circle. So we will simply paste it below and we will move it slightly to the left by specifying location minus 90 pixels. We will make it a little bit smaller by specifying radius minus 40. And we also want to draw it a bit lower. So we will copy this new radius and we will add it to our Y location. We can then copy this brand new line of code. We can paste it below. And this time we will draw it 90 pixels to the right of the first circle. We can now run this cell with shift enter. Boom. Now I would also like to draw some branches from the center of the trunk up until the center of the new leaf circles. So let's go back to our code and do just that. And as you can probably guess, we will simply copy the trunk command and we will use it to create our branches. Now, since we want this branch to end, exactly where the center of our new circle starts, we will simply copy the location from our circle commands. And that's for the X2 and Y2. Now, in terms of X1, we don't need to change a thing because it is perfectly centered along the tree. But Y1, on the other hand, must be changed from the ground level to somewhere much upwards along the trunk. So what we will do is we will fetch the height of the tree and then we will add about 150 pixels, which will bring the root of our new branch to somewhere here. So X1 remains exactly the same, but Y1 becomes ground level minus self dot height, which represents the total height of our tree. And then we would like to add 150 pixels so that our branch is drawn a bit below. We can now copy this line of code after adjusting the line thickness to, let's say 10. So we will copy it again now and we will paste it underneath while refactoring self.location plus 90 to self.location minus 90. And then we will fix the indentation issue and we will run this code. Boom. And actually, let's make the trunk slightly fatter. Let's change it to 40 pixels. Beautiful. Now, so far, everything is rainbows and butterflies because our height as well as the radius do not change. But what if we're looking for a taller tree with less leaves? We can rerun this cell. Ugh. This, this looks like a Chernobyl popsicle with two baby heads on the shoulders. So what we need to do is we need to find a way of scaling this object relative to itself, rather than just playing around with some arbitrary attributes. To do this, we will create a new attribute called scale, and we will assign it to two, which represents 200%. And we will then multiply many of the arguments we see in the draw method by the scale attribute. So let's go ahead and copy it, and we will begin with the tree trunk 
thickness. Now, since our scale factor is 2, instead of 40, we will type 20 times self.scale, which is 20 times 2, which is 40. So the objective here is not to change anything on the image. What we really want to do is to make our tree object scalable. This will allow us to select different sizes without affecting the proportions of our object. So if we've done it for the trunk thickness, let's do it for the branch thickness. So instead of 10, we will type 5 times self.scale, and we will repeat it for the second branch. And then we can go ahead and refactor the radius as well. So previously, we have defined our radius as self-radius. But since we would like to scale it, we will simply multiply it by self.scale. If we want to do the same for the smaller circles, that's going to be a bit more tricky, because here we are dealing with two values. We have the radius and we have the minus 40 pixels. So the way to tackle this is to first multiply self.radius by self.scale, and then we will additionally multiply 20 by self.scale which will result in a very, very long expression. So just to avoid typing it time and again, let's cut it. Let's go to the very top of our draw method, and we will define a local variable called small radius. We will then assign the expression we just cut right to it. Then instead of typing all this very long command, we will simply type small radius. Now, additionally, we have used the small radius as part of our y coordinate for the circles. So instead of self.radius minus 40, we will type small radius once again. We will do this across both our smaller circles. Now, since the center of the small circles matches the endpoint of our branches, we will also need to adjust it here as well. So self.radius minus 40 changes to small radius time and again. Now, the last thing to consider when we speak of radiuses is that this particular command will return a radius of 200 pixels, since this equals 100 and this equals 2, which will not look very proportional. So let's go back to where we defined the attribute, and we will change 100 to 50. And now the only values that we will still need to scale are all those integers we added to our arguments. So instead of 150, we will type 75 times self.scale. And we will, of course, apply it to our second branch as well. Then instead of location minus 90 pixels, we will say location minus 45 pixels times self.scale. Let's see if there's anything else we forgot. Yes, so again, 45 times self.scale. And now, if everything is correct, once we rerun the cell, nothing changes, which is perfect. But then, if we go ahead and we refactor the scale from 2 to 1, and we rerun the cell, our tree is much smaller, but the proportion remains the same. We can try the same thing with a scale of 3. Still beautiful, still proportional. Good job. Now let's go ahead and add some highlights to really make this tree pop. To do this, we will copy all our leaf circles and we will paste them right below my brand new comment. We can now go ahead and start refactoring. So green will turn into light green. Then our radius will be slightly smaller. So we will reduce 10 times self.scale across all our radiuses. So we will copy minus 10 times dot scale, and we will apply it on our small radiuses as well. And this will create some really nice highlights. Now, an additional step, in order to create an illusion of depth, we will also copy our trunk as well as the branches. We will actually cut them and we will paste them in between the shadows and the highlights. If we now go ahead and rerun this code, our tree now looks much nicer and much fancier. And once we are happy with the tree, we can finally replicate it. So right above our class call, we will type for i in range and you can select any number of trees. I'm going to go with n underscore trees. 
which is a global variable that equals 30. You can find it at the top of the code. So for this range of 30, we would like to set image to equal our tree class. Now, if we do not change the location value, our trees will be drawn one on top of the other and we're not gonna see much change. So instead, we can use our iteration variable i to spread those trees apart. And instead of 450, we will type 100, which is the location of the first tree, plus i times whichever gap we would like to have in between the trees. In my case, I'm gonna go for 200 pixels and then our trees will be drawn 200 pixels apart. Let's go ahead and run this code. And this looks quite nice, but it doesn't reflect reality. Where was the last time you've seen trees growing precisely two pixels apart from each other? Never. This is perfect for drawing a fence. This is perfect for drawing man-made stuff. But if we're dealing with mother nature, we need to add some randomness. So instead of taking in the location as a parameter, we will simply get rid of it. And then we can set our location attribute to np.random.choice. And we would like to choose from a range of numbers from 0 to 900, which is just like writing 900. Now, additionally, we need to specify how many numbers to choose, and we are only interested in one. Then lastly, this expression returns a NumPy object. What we really need is an integer. So we will convert this entire expression to an integer. Then we will simply scroll all the way down. We will remove the second argument from our class, and we will rerun the cell. Awesome, now let's select a random scale and a random height. In terms of height, we will simply copy our random choice command and we will refactor 900 to a range of 200 until 350. In terms of scale, we would like to go for floating point numbers this time. So we can still paste the random choice command from before, but instead of the range of 900, we will need the np.lin space that starts from 0.5, goes all the way till 2.5, and the amount of numbers to choose from would be 8. So what this lint space command does is it creates a NumPy array that starts from 0.5 and ends at 2.5. This range is then equally divided by 8, and this will result in 8 different scale values to choose from. Now the only issue is, is those scale values are all floating point numbers and they should remain that way. So we will remove the int conversion because we want to have the ability to multiply the tree by a factor of a half or by a factor of one and a half. But since OpenCV is working with integers only, we will need to make a few more adjustments to our code to avoid errors. So inside our draw method, everywhere we see self.scale, we will need to convert the entire expression into an integer instead of converting the scale itself. You will see how much better it looks like in the very end. So we will convert the entire small radius into an integer. And we will of course copy this integer conversion command because we will use it in many more places. So let's start with our circles. We will scroll all the way to the right and we will convert our radius. We will convert 45 times scale we will do this for the trunk and branches. It's definitely a lot of typing and a lot of converting, but it's all worth it in the very end. And I believe I have tackled everything. There's always a chance I forgot something. And we'll find out soon enough, because if we didn't refactor all the floating point numbers into integers, we will get an error. So let's try to rerun this cell with Shift Enter. Beautiful. And now we are drawing trees in all kinds of different sizes. But the only problem is, since all our trees have the exact same color, 
they are blending one into another, which doesn't look very nice. So let's add some random colors as well. And there are actually a few ways to do this, but on my end, I'm going to create a brand new method called generate colors, which will take in the self parameter only. And we will begin with the green. So we can assign it to an intensity of zero on the blue channel, an intensity of zero on the red channel, and then in terms of the green channel, we will select random values. So we will type random dot rand int, and we are interested in a range of numbers between 130 and 200. Now in terms of light green, we will simply copy this expression, we will paste it below, we will refactor green to light green, Instead of zero on the blue channel, let's go for 35. We will do the same for the red channel. And then lastly, for our green values, we will actually use 200 to 250 for the lighter green. So the higher the values on the channel, the lighter the color becomes. Now in terms of brown, we will actually do something a bit different. Instead of selecting arbitrary values, we will go for three different shades of brown, which we are interested at. So what we will do is random.choice, which is different from the NumPy random.choice, and we will pass an array where the first color is 2, 30, and 85. The second color is 5, 55, 120, and then the last color is 0, 70, 140. And these are the only brown colors I want to work with. I don't want to randomly generate them. I want them to be very specific. Now, lastly, in order to see these colors, we will need to return them. We can then copy our return variables. We will paste them inside the draw method and we will assign them to generate colors, which will then allow us to delete all these colors we defined earlier. Aha, uh -huh. now the only exclusion is we have included green as part of our background. So let's refactor it to 70, 180, 75. And if I didn't do any typos along the way, if we rerun this code, we get an error. I did have a few typos. Let's see. Ah, aha, uh -huh. that's quite an easy fix. So instead of calling just generate colors, which is like a function name, we need to call the method generate colors and now everything should work i hope i don't have any other typos so shift enter boom look at this beautiful drawing now the only issue i have is that those trees are overlapping with the ground so i'm gonna easily fix it by just drawing the ground on top let's close this let's scroll all the way up we will copy this ground rectangle and we will paste it in the end of our draw method we will then rerun this code, ha, much nicer. And the beauty of it is whenever we rerun this code, we get a brand new image time and again. So if you don't like the way that the trees are arranged, just rerun it. If you don't like the way the colors are arranged, just rerun it. If you think the trees are a bit too thick, we can always go back to our code. We can revise lint space to end at two, Instead of 2.5, we can rerun it again. The trees are thinner. We want them to be taller. We just go back to the code and we set the height at 400 max. We will rerun it again and the trees are taller. And even though this is absolutely amazing, we have just scratched the surface of object-oriented programming. We can actually do so many more things with it and we will keep practicing our skills in future lessons. Now, if you guys didn't feel like coding along, if you didn't feel like typing, you can still get the complete version of my code from the description of the video. Now, thank you so much for watching. If you guys found this tutorial helpful, please give it a like, maybe leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell or share this video with as many people as possible. Now, thanks again for watching and I will see you very soon in a brand new Flask project. So definitely don't go too far.